David did some. Um, well, this was me. This, this was this. Well, I I oh, got yeah. some, oh, right. yes. yeah. some research that has recently been done through land land care research. Oh yeah, I just referenced. I'm um, quite right. Okay. Oh. I understand. <laughs> Sorry for falsely trying to credit you with that. <laughs> um, so we're looking at comparing a concrete tank and a plastic tank in terms of life cycle energy and also in terms of the amount of CO2 that has been created in the production of that tank. Now life cycle energy is how much energy has been used in actually making all the parts of that tank. So it goes back. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, so, in terms of the total rain collection system, um, the they're quite comparable. And in the total for the rain tank, you've got seventy nine point two gigajoules, and the concrete tank, you know, after a hundred years just because the, the, the life expectancy is longer, you've got about half of that. So, you know, and, and adjusted for time, probably even less than half. Um, similarly, in, the, in terms of the carbon dioxide emissions in the creation of, of the tanks, the uh, plastic tank uh, is considerably higher, 6.4 in the total life cycle, than the concrete tank. So concrete, in, that, in, in both respects, is actually going to have less of an ecological footprint over the life of the product. Which is kind of not what you would initially maybe think, because concrete does take a lot of, a lot of uh, of actual energy in kind of making it, but the HDP has all the oil, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not what you. So, do you agree with those? Have, have, have oh, you done much work in that? I'm interested to have a look at those figures. Yeah? yeah, because you need a massive truck to cart your concrete tank, you need a 10 ton hub to lift it off, uh, and it, it really depends. Uh, concrete tanks tend to be made in the areas where the Polyethylene tanks are run all over the North Island, out of um, uh, Auckland and out of Tauron. So, having done a fair bit of work in land care research, I've been inclined just to. I'd, I'd be interested in just seeing what some of the figures were. Yeah. For example, every day there are streams of tanks heading out of Auckland up to the top of the country, polyethylene. And yet there are concrete tank makers all over the place, so they'll dash out and live all square on that and new property and build one. So I think there are a few other factors there. It's a bit like the argument that you should have a Hummer or a um, mm -hmm. uh, one of those uh, dual power things, and now it turns out that the Hummer is a far better thing for the environment. So. No, I don't. that was discredited. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's <Very>. unfair. That's a great story. That's a great story. What's discredited in the end? Do you know what electricity source they use? They use? Ah, good question. No, I don't. It's probably based on a, a New Zealand kind of average. Rather than the concrete tank makers were paying for this research. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some research. I don't. Have it about blue, blue, blue sculpt steel over in in uh, Australia had a research done at a, a university to examine the life cycle energy and CO2 of steel tanks compared to concrete tanks and HDPE tanks. And they came out with that steel tanks were actually better than concrete tanks and HDPE. Now I guess 
the amount of steel in a steel tank is relatively small. I mean, and because even in a concrete tank you have steel in the actual uh, mesh and so mm. forth, which is another thing you wouldn't have probably thought of that. So, I mean, I think what we realise is that people are realising that these things are important and they're trying to measure them. It may take another few more years until we all kind of sort it out how, what we should be measuring and how to. But, yeah. And I guess the timber tanks might even come out best, mm. perhaps, depending on the HDP line, but that would be a relatively thin HDP line, so perhaps timber tanks are mostly line. On the hand of uh, building a timber tank here in the in the rainforest. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be empty, but yeah, there's many, many ways to, it, to attack these statistics. Yeah, 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 it's a challenge. This is an interesting one, yeah. Mm. So this is looking at reticulated supply, essentially your mains water, compared to uh, plastic, and rainwater harvesting with a plastic tank and, and with a concrete tank, respectively. So, uh, <coughs> it doesn't actually look favourable. You know, you actually it looks like you're going backwards with a with a plastic tank and slightly forwards with a concrete tank in terms of of the life cycle energy that's used and. and so with a reticulated supply, I imagine that that includes all the infrastructure. I think they tried to take into account treatment plants and dams and that whole going right the way back, which gets rather messy. Yes, good work. <laughs> yeah. Does it include yeah. the energy that the people who have actually put the system in have had to, the food they've had to eat and all the energy in creating the food and transporting? I mean, really, it's gone forever. That's the trouble with these things, <laughs> setting those boundaries. How far do you go working these things out? Does that yes, mean that, that one would certainly be, be worth having an in-depth look at? Yeah. Um, and just what they use. <laughs> and the other thing they found too, I believe, was it depends on the size of house and the size of tank that is needed for the house. And how far you park. So there's, there, I mean, there's a number of yeah. A yeah. assumptions that have to be made. But I think what we're trying to do is to say, okay, these are ball, you know, ballpark numbers, and it makes us think, and then we can focus more on where we need to. I can, we can probably, is there a, we can probably put a couple of these papers on our website or yeah. something. Well, I'll, um, if you think of how to get me the links, I'll send out an email to everyone after the, uh, in this, this coming week mm -hmm. with some links to various bits of information and, and, and websites and papers that are available. We can put it all on that, Phil. On Deep Green, too. Yeah, yeah perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can write something and just put it up as, a, mm -hmm. as an app with the new links. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so we didn't talk about the uh, the CO two, but again, it's it's a similar picture. So uh, under advice, uh, with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> yes.